So this is what was supposed to change Ghana's destiny. This is what was supposed to change Ghana's destiny. And we got intellectuals in Ghana could not question these people. So they were doing the Atia kind of politics. Say things. We remember the incompetence. What is incompetence? We remember the disrespect to teachers. And that John Dramani Mahama, teachers in Ghana, got the best of services in our history. They were not looking. And that John Dramani Mahama's administration, nurses, young students, were given an opportunity to, at the end of the day, understand why some allowances were taken from them to build UDS, UGMC, build Ridge, build the chip compounds around the world, around the country, build all the clinics around the country. Under John Dramani Mahama, every work worker in Ghana was told to understand that we are building a nation whereby everybody will fit into it. This lady comes to stand there, Nehun Tumagusa Boliga confirm. We will remember this. We remember this. This will not change anything. Because you see what? When we have men who call themselves, we are intellectuals in the NPP. And when they fall for these kind of things, you need to understand that we were going to be led by ignorant fools. That's why we are here today. Bring this, Boliga confirm, back to the studio. And question her on every single thing that she said. She doesn't have an idea. She was in class with people. But we lowered the politics. And let me tell you, Ghanaian, something. I would say on my platform today, John Mahama, NDC, there were some corrupt people in that party, in that government. John Mahama himself, today, he will, he will, I will never sit here and say John Mahama is Jesus Christ. But let me tell you something. Nobody in the history of our country and nobody in the history of this government has been able to sit on any platform to connect John Mahama to any corruption with facts. Nobody. When you put NPP people, the big shot on TV, on radio, and ask them, tell me, what John Mahama is directly connected to, that makes him a corrupt president. There were corruption under his government. He was the leader, so he's going to take the blame. But tell me, to tell me John Mahama cannot be compared to these entia and this ignorant fool, these people. Tell me one thing that you can say, this document links John Dramani Mahama to this theft. Nothing of that sort. And it it is not there because John Mahama at the end of the day was branded as a corrupt leader. But under Nanado Dankwe Kufuado, we can pick documents linking to him directly that you, Mr. President, you are the thief. So we sit in Ghana and Yempese Yebe Kanokre. I am still waiting for one person to come out on TV, on radio, and say, John Mahama, we are for This shows clearly. His hand was in. His signature is here. Add him. Let the world know. Yatina Ghana has six years after Ekufuado won power. The only time they wanted to fool you again, they went to UK. Some dead story. You see, Airbus, John Mahama, be You see, government official one, Air John Mahama. Ask them. And here in the document, John Mahama was directly involved. Any atia, any man kwasi afowi, a dim kwasi a some sa a player. If anybody can come out with a document, the way we are able to do scandals here, like PDS, a Japa, like scandals with the Kufuado's signature on, I want somebody to bring one document and say John Mahama was directly involved. Why do we do that to ourselves? We will never get a perfect government, a perfect president, but we should not also allow a fool and a criminal to lead. It's very important. We need to draw that distinction. We will never get a perfect government. We will never get a perfect president, but with John Mahama comparing him to these fools, then we're not supposed to lower this country's governance like that. Let's talk about Baumia. We are still doing calculation. I have like five minutes more. He was asked about corruption. 
Have you ever heard here about or have you ever heard Baumia on any platform defend himself when it comes to corruption? No, you know why? Because that was how they made him go out there and brighten the corner of a kufuad. We are Tenny, stay away from that. So you, some things might come from your office. Next week, I'll be doing a scandal from Baumia's office with a signature in there, and you see that E Levy. The money they are taking from the banks. I'll come and put a document here and let them come out from Baumia's office and say they have no idea about this. Listen to Baumia. We're still doing calculization. Then I asked Dr. Baumia how citizens can be reasonably assured that MPP will deliver on its policies this time around in the light of the fact that the political parties have failed and refused to do so in the past, including the MPP. I want to have hope again, but history tells me it's all talk and that it's unwise to be hopeful. They just want to enrich themselves in power. What's your reaction to that? That's my final... Um, if it was a matter of enriching himself, Nana Kofuado would not really be here. He's not someone who is there for making money. He's one of the most uh, honest. He's a man of integrity. He's very honest, and he's very focused on delivering a vision. Nana Kofuado is not in politics because of his stomach. Everybody knows he's incorruptible, and I'm very glad to provide him with the support. We really mean what we say about wanting to transform this economy. We want to relieve Ghanaians of the hardships. If you look today, you know, teachers are suffering, teacher trainees are suffering, fishermen are suffering, nurses are suffering, cocoa farmers are suffering, laborers are suffering, you know, drivers are suffering, insurance costs and, and roadworthy and all of that. You know, prices are, are much higher today uh, uh, than during the MPP era across. And, and, and so we want to bring in an, a transformative agenda to make Ghana the most business friendly and the most people friendly economy in Africa. We really mean it and we are asking for the support of Ghanaians uh, for Nana Dankwa Kufuado and the MPP uh, to, to bring this change that we need so badly in mm. Ghana. We wish you well. In your so you see his line of argument is it's like a poem. So who's Teddy Baumia here? He knows nothing. Now he he uses some taglines. He he infused those things in his language because he's not somebody that can sit to say, Sibia, you can ask Sekpe a question and he will talk about a the theory part and talk about a practical part. Baumia does not do that. Consistently, if you listen to Baumia very well, his audio and I say his voice sounds the same. Teachers are suffering, nursing trainees are suffering, Malams are suffering, Kwatafua are suffering with all due respect. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 fishermen are suffering. This uh, it is it is just it is just comedy. Now he's talking about Ekufuado not being corrupt. Can Baumia sit on any TV and defend Ekufuado like this again? He can't. Because the moment he tries, he knows he is at the end of the day burying himself. No political person or Baumia's team, nobody from Baumia's team can today pick the mic and defend the Kufuado that he's not corrupt. Because the moment you do that, you piss Ghanaians off. Baumia himself today cannot go and sit on any radio station and defend a Kufuado wholeheartedly that he's not corrupt. He's not directly linked to all the corruption. He knows that when he tries, the anger of the rest of the people who are considering him a little bit, it will even get out of hand. So he has stayed out of that. Now Baumia does not protect Ekufuado. Baumia is expecting somebody to protect him. But what do we use to protect people? We use facts. We use truth. We use consistency to pro protect integrity and image of people. If I want to protect John Draman Mahama, if I want to protect Baumia, if I want to protect Ekufuado, I need facts to protect you. If you want me to be your firewall, I will need facts to protect you. Now, if you don't have those facts, I can't protect you. That is why today, as we sit, nobody can protect Baumia because he doesn't have that firewall again. The firewall was the media that was protecting him from his lies. The firewall was that tribalism that people adopted to, to, to try and protect Baumia. The, the firewall that was protecting Baumia was all because somebody was branded as a criminal, even though we, we were even though we knew the truth so today nobody in ghana can sit on tv and on radio and say let me defend Baumia," because they can show you only three videos and all the defense you built 
All the Jericho wall you build around Baumia will come down in three seconds. He's eating his tongue up. He's sad. He's in, he's in sorrow. He's hurt because at the end of the day, he allowed some criminals to use him. Baumia has no defense. He has no firewall. Baumia has been given to the dogs. And that is what we have to understand. We should stop lying to people, lying our way to power. That is why today somebody who was branded incompetent, a stealer or a thief, somebody who was branded arrogant, somebody who was branded as not respecting Ghanaians today has more firewalls, has more antivirus to protect him than the person in the game now. Today, you can pick John Dramani Mahama and I swear to God, it will be difficult for anybody to stick anything on John Mahama. You know why? Because his works, his works, what he did are his firewall. Because John Muhammad's governance, his leadership, that is his firewall. Now, do these guys have firewall? No. So after saying all these things, going to the north, lying to them, using students, lying through his teeth, using his makeup artist, the Gimpa Wi-Fi, using all these comedy, comedy words, he went back to the people and all that he could give them was this. The lives of the people of Agboboloshi matter as much as the lives of the people of East Legon or Cantonments. Ain't he? Yeba Hano, Yebesi toilets, Amamu. Yebesi toilets. In all, Yebesi eight unit toilets, four eight unit toilets, eh, 32 toilets in all among the people of Agogu. Who sorry now, who got toilet? Who is our big Jari? Any answer? Who sorry now, who got toilet? Who is our big Jari? Any answer? Who sorry now, who got toilet? Who is our big Jari? Any answer? Who's sorry now? Who got toilet? Who is our big Jari? Any answer? Who's sorry now? Who got toilet? Who is our big Jari? Any answer? Who big Jari? Enti ya ya besi bath houses so akamu ya besi twenty four unit bath houses and eight in all twenty four unit bath houses. Say there, mubenya ebi mubeko namu Jari ana pa. Mubenya, <laughs> So basically, that's the climax. After promising them one million per constituency, after promising them one district, one factory, after promising them one dam per constituency, after promising them jobs, pro promising them heaven on earth, after promising them better economy, promising them that the dollar is going to be weaker against the, do, uh, the city. After promising them that farmers are going to enjoy what farming is. After promising them heaven. Mahmoud Baumia today is promising Ghanaians toilets. And the result of what I've been telling you is this. There's nothing again. And Baumia be to me atre. Say he can change and yet the condition you are in now. Ghana for, I am not doing this as a joke. I am doing this because I want to educate you. I want you to understand why you vote. I want you to analyze and sum up politicians. Politicians are the same. It's a lie. Somebody, upon all the history behind the Ashanti kingdom, upon history entire Ashanti Maichi, be to me yeah, what nobody has been able to do to build a Yekejitia market in the history of the Republic of Ghana. Asantiniba Udimokudin Chinibidi, a year president, went to me in Sikejitia. 
it have you have to understand politicians are not the same some people work they deliver they look at the plight of the people amount for the how and your how listen we will never get a perfect president but we will get a president who will listen and work for us to liberate us from this hardship we will never get a perfect president but we should not also fall for a fool or a liar after this short break, I will do the social media segment. We've always sung the first stanza of our...